Hey, sports fans, it's your favorite program, Social in the Distance. Today, we're talking with Laura Thweet. Laura, did I pronounce your name correctly? You did. I'm actually shocked. Most people, it takes like one or two tries. Uh, I usually get sweat, so I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, she can, uh, competes for Team Boss Art. She's sponsored by Saucony. She's up at 9,000 feet in Crested Butte. Uh, okay, first of all, what's it like training at 9,000 feet? It's really hard. Um, it's funny because I'm a Colorado girl. I grew up in Durango, born and raised, uh, which is about like 6,500 feet. And then yeah. I ran at CU for four years and still live in Boulder, haven't left. So I've been in Colorado my whole life. And so two years ago, when we came up here for my first stint, uh, I wasn't really that worried about it. I was like, ugh, I've been at altitude my whole life. Like what's a higher elevation? Like it's going to be fine. It yeah. was not fine. It is so much harder training at 9,000 feet. Um, we do all of our workouts down in Gunnison, which is about 7,700 feet. So just okay. under 8,000 feet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm breathing hard up here. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, you got to fuel more, rest more. Um, so I definitely, it's been a learning curve for me on how to more appropriately train uh, hard up here. But it's great because uh, we go back down to Boulder and it's like, oh, is this sea level? Like 5,500 feet feels pretty good after 9,000 feet, so. <laughs> in the 70s, I would go up to Tuolumne Meadows in my Volkswagen bus oh, and tr train for two or three weeks. And we had, and then when we'd run behind Half Dome, you'd get up to almost over 9,000. And you mm -hmm. could tell on that run, you know, just as you got up, we had a 20K that kind of whipped around. Um, just the differences um when you if you're up there for a few weeks do you feel does it get easier um at the higher altitude or not i wouldn't say it gets easier but you definitely uh find yourself adjusting to it and you definitely see the increase in your fitness um but i I'm always breathing hard. Workouts are always challenging. Um, I have like easy runs where like, if I'm running, like I can't run faster than eight minute pace. Um, mm -hmm. so it definitely doesn't get easier, but you kind of just get used to what it takes to train at this elevation and kind of what to expect in your workouts and then in recovery days. Um, so that part gets easier, but yeah, I mean, it's always a shock to the system, uh, the first like week or two up here, but then you kind of like, all right, you get in your rhythm, you get in your routine, you kind of know how you're going to feel. And so that way, yeah, it gets a little bit easier as you go. Um, when you go down to, uh, sea level and you race, do you, if you do it right away, is there a quick, like it takes you a while to go up and deal with altitude. How is it when you come back to sea level? It's funny. Um, I think it's kind of different for all of us. Um, but we kind of talk about this like effect that we feel. So when you go from like, when we fly straight from Crest of Butte or Gunnison, um, like to a sea level race, like the first day or two at sea level, like it's almost like my legs can't keep up with my body. Like it's, oh, wow. it's really weird. Like how, yeah, it's just weird in the adjustment as far as just like when you're like running quicker, like you're so fit and you have this huge engine, but it's like, you're down with all this oxygen. And so it's like, you almost feel like you can just like move and run faster. So it kind of like takes a day or two for like your body to kind of like catch up to like where you are like aerobically. I don't know how to explain it, but that's the only thing I've noticed is it's just like your legs are just trying to like kind of keep up with, with you a little bit, but um, you definitely also feel like the oxygen, like you can just like feel it being lower after being so high. But again, for me, it's a little bit different because I've always been at altitude or I've always mm -hmm. been at higher elevations. And so going down to sea level, yes, you notice it as far as like the times you're running and it's reflected in your race performance, so to speak. But I don't like, I guess I don't notice it so much as like, Whoa, like I feel so different. Like for yeah. me, it's like, there's a difference, but it's not just like, it doesn't like smack me over the head. I'm like, okay, like I'm definitely, there's more air down here for sure. <laughs> um, but were your parents involved in running? Not really. No. So, um, my parents have always run recreationally. Um, yeah. and so when I first went out for cross country in high school, I did a couple runs with my dad. Um, and I still joke to this day, I call him coach dad. Cause he would be yeah. out there running with me and he'd be trying to like run workouts with me. And, um, so it's something my family always did, but my parents never competed. 
Um, they've never raced competitively. Um, they just do it as like a lifestyle. Um, so I grew up with it, uh, grew up around running that way, but yeah, my parents were never competitive with it. What kind of a runner were you in high school? Um, I was a very low volume runner. I ran maybe 20 miles a week. Um, wow. so because I was such a low volume runner, I, I ran every day really hard. Like I had this philosophy that like, if you're not running hard and you don't finish a run like all out, then like, why did you do it? Um, and so, and that's also how I raced. I raced yeah. really aggressively and I was like, I'm here to win and I'm going to go out in the front and I'm just going to run that way and hope that I can make it to the finish line. So I had this like, kind of like running is so tough and hard. And like, you know, I, it was finally a sport I was good at. Like I experimented with a thousand different sports and was like horrible <laughs> at all of them. And then I found my way into running and was like, wow, I can actually do this. And so for me, it was kind of like a game of like, how hard can you run? You know, like how like how hard, how far can you push yourself? So that was kind of the runner I was in high school. Um, always wanted to PR, wanted to get the school records, wanted to win state, wanted to go run D1. Like that was kind of um, who I was. And then college happened and I had to kind of learn some lessons the hard way <laughs> for sure. So you were coached by coach uh, Wetmore and coach Burroughs. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, what was the biggest change for you between high school and college? I think the biggest change for me was the volume and the intensity of the workouts. Um, like at CU, I, I know Mark's changed things quite a bit um, from like when I was there to what he does now. But when I was there, you know, like I was expected to come in as a freshman around 45, 50 miles a week, which isn't a ton, but yeah. from 20 miles a week, it was a pretty big jump. But then yeah. on top of that, you have four hard days, you know, so, yeah. you know, Tuesday's a workout, Wednesday is a hard MD, you know, Friday's a workout, Sunday's a long run. So you have an increase in volume and then you have an increase in intensity and the amount of intensity. Um, and so my philosophy of like, well, every day is hard and you just go out there and you just run hard. You can't do that in college at a program like CU. Um, yeah. and so I ended up, uh, struggling with that my first two years and just adjusting to figuring out how to run the volume, how to do the intensity and how to do it in a way that I could stay healthy. The, um, what was the biggest mistake you made in training in college? Um, I compared, I, I compared myself to my teammates. So I thought that I had to be doing exactly what everyone else was doing. And I thought that I had to prove myself every single day to Mark if I wanted to make the team or travel to races or, you know, mm -hmm. be all American or whatever the case was. I had all these goals for myself and I thought that I had to like prove it every single day to him, to myself, to my teammates. And so I would just run way too hard. Like even in workouts, like Mark would give us assignments. Um, but it was very easy for some things to become a race. Um, and so I was just going way too hard in training. Um, and then I would get to the race and I would kind of flop. And that also had to do like psychologically, I was like battling some demons in college, um, as far as just the mental aspect of the sport. But I think sure. the biggest thing for me was just thinking I had to prove myself every single day in practice. And if I wasn't crushing the workouts, then I wasn't like good enough to be on the team or good enough in Mark's size, but you can only do that for so long. And then you get to the races and then you start to see those performances slide. So I wish someone would have told me earlier, focus on yourself. Like, yes, you're in a college program and like, you know, coaches can only tweak things so much, but they can tweak things and you kind of have to find what keeps you healthy and what works for you and what worked for a teammate of mine didn't necessarily work for me. And so that was okay. And I just, it took me like my whole career to kind of, or my whole collegiate career to kind of figure that lesson out. So. What was your favorite racing distance in college? I loved the 5k my, well, I loved cross country. I'm a cross country girl, like hands down still to this day, but I loved the 5k and my whole goal in college was to break 16 minutes in the 5k and my senior year at Mount Sac, I ran 1556 and it was like uh, the greatest moment of my life. And Mark gave me a hug after that race. And he was like, welcome to the sub 16 club. And I thought I had made it. <laughs> so I loved the 5k. I did some tens in college, but I didn't really like the 10 in college. Um, I liked the five. It was just kind of like that 
you know, I, I was a miler in high school, which I loved the mile, but then mm-hmm. I came to college and wasn't quite fast enough. Uh, so the 5k was kind of like the mile for me, but like with more laps, you know, it's just that high intensity, hot race from the gun. It gets yeah. hard, you know, you need a kick. Like I just loved everything about the 5k. So that was kind of like what I wanted to do, uh, as far as track went in college. And that's mostly what I did. When did you know you had a shot at being a pro athlete? <laughs> not till like I was like three years into my pro career <laughs> I um okay I well I graduated from CU and yeah. I was never all American in either cross country or track mm-hmm. I never made a track nationals I um like you know I barely broke 16 in the five you know like I wasn't an athlete companies were after and you know I left CU I left Mark and Heather and didn't really have anyone, didn't know how to continue running. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to keep running at that point. And so Mm. I took like three months off, uh, didn't run a step, um, only started running because I took an assistant coaching job at a local high school in Boulder. Um, got back into running because I wanted to run with the girls, uh, you know, being back in an environment with high school cross country, you know, being on the other side of the sport, like coaching young girls, like kind of like relighted the fire. Um, And then one of my old teammates from CU, Matt Tebow, I don't know if you uh, know of Matt, but um, he was a superstar um, in high school, had a pretty good career at college, but same as me kind of ended like with unfinished business. Um, He found Lee Troop through Jason Hartman, uh, and essentially convinced me to talk to Lee and was just like, listen, like, you can, you can make running whatever you want, but he's like, end it on your terms, like end it on your note, you know, like college didn't quite go the way you wanted it to. You kind of left, like having missed out on a lot of things you thought you were going to do and like that, you know, it didn't happen. Um, so he was like, what's like, what's the harm in just like meeting with this coach and just getting back into running, like if nothing else for yourself. So I was like, all right. So I sat down with Lee. He was great. Um, basically said the same thing. He was like, you're never going to get what you want out of running performance wise. If you don't love what you do, you got to just get back to loving running. So that was basically his philosophy with me. Like the first like few years he worked with me, like we were just chipping away at track times, just chipping away at some cross country races and, you know, placing and, um, you know, slowly, but surely, like I made like uh, a knack at cross team, you know, I ran 1530 on the track, you know, like you're just slowly kind of chipping away. And so it wasn't until 2013 when I won my first club cross country championship, yeah. um, in Bend, Oregon in December that I was like, I could do this. Like I could do this as a, like, I could maybe do this as a profession. Like I could maybe like make money doing something that I love with running. And that was never something I thought I, I could do. Um, cause at the time I was coaching and working full-time at runner's roost. Um, yeah. and I was just running because I wanted to run and I had a great thing with Lee and I was loving it again, which was just so nice after struggling with that in college. Um, so yeah, 2013 was kind of when I was like, all right, like maybe I could do something with this. Like why, like why limit myself? Like maybe I can really do the things that my high school self thought that I could do, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like when it started to sink in. Uh, when did you get sponsored by Saucony? Uh, 2014. Okay. Uh, so okay. I, in 2013, I had a really good 12 K championship. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. when they were doing like the cumulative, like row 12 K at the end of the row championship series. Um, I was third that year to Molly huddle and Shalane Flanagan. And then I went and won you at, or I won club cross. Um, and so I started talking to Saucony, uh, in early 2014. And then I officially signed with them like right before Peyton Jordan in okay. 2014. Um, and I've been with them ever since feel very lucky. They've been so good to me. Fantastic company to run for. Um, and yeah, I'm just so happy happy to have re-signed and I get to finish out my career with them. So pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. When, when was your first marathon? Uh, New York, uh, 2015 was when I did. Yep. And you, what was your time there? Do you recall? Uh, I was seventh in 228, 20, I think. Yep. 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 I remember I was in the media room. We were watching you. Oh, nice. You were there. Very cool. I did, did a couple stories about it. What do you remember from your first marathon? Um, I remember having a breakdown the night before, um, Lee and I went to the technical meeting and 
one, a major marathon technical meeting is like very overwhelming. Like I find it very overwhelming. Like you're in there with like all of these international athletes, agents, coaches, you know, I remember Sam got up and they put the marathon course up on the like big screen. And then like, they're walking you through each mile and like mapping it. And I'm sitting there like looking at it and I'm like, I can't do that. Like, are you kidding me? I can't run 26. I can't race 26 miles. Like, why did I think I could do this? And I got so overwhelmed. Um, and so I, the technical meeting ended, I got my bib and then I went out in the hall and just started like crying. Like I just like broke down and started crying. And Lee was like, what is going on? And I was like, I can't do it. I'm so overwhelmed. Like there's, what were we thinking? Like, I'm not ready for this. Like it's going to go horribly. Um, so he talked me off the ledge, got me dinner, put me to bed. Uh, I got up the next morning and I was like, weirdly fine. I was like, all right, like, let's do this. Like, I got nothing to lose. It's my first one. Like, who cares? Like, I'm just gonna throw myself in it and just see what happens. Um, and so that's exactly what I did. And I remember thinking like the first 15 K I was like, huh, like, I feel, I feel weirdly good. Like, I feel like I'm just doing a long run. Like I feel like I could do this all day. Like I was amazed at like, you know, cause after doing five K's and 10 K's on the track, where like you're just out hot from the gun like the marathon is so different like you're not lactic like a couple miles into the race like you're like huh everything still feels pretty good like I'm just cruising um and so then I got too cocky and I got like halfway um I got through 13 miles feeling like I was just on top of the world and I'm like you know you look around at who you're next to you're with like some of the great like Mary Katani's like right next to me and you're just like man I'm feeling good like I'm you know I'm with all like the greats like you know I could like I could win this thing you know like stupid like cocky like me um and so like halfway through I took the lead and I was like I'm leading the New York City Marathon like this is so sick like I can't believe I'm doing this and like you know you get down on like first ave and it's like so loud and like you're yeah. just I remember Meb actually the night before had told me like be careful because like when you come off and like or I think it's 16th and you like start to head back up towards the park it's really loud and you get really excited but you have like 10 more miles so like hold it down. Of course I hit that part and I'm like, whoa, like I'm leading, like, this is so cool. And then I think around mile 18, Mary went and like, it just blew up our little pack. Um, and I was running next to Sally Kipiego, who it was also her first marathon. And that's when I started thinking like, oh no, like <laughs> it's getting real. Like everything's kind of starting to like, not feel so good. You still have like six, seven, you know, miles to go. It's all like this at New York, you know, you have to finish in the park. It was oh, just yeah. Sally and I, so I'm just like, all right, just get to the next bottle station. Like just get to like 30 K, you know, get to 35 K and I'm running next to Sally. And like, all of a sudden I look over and like, Sally's gone. Like she's just gone. And I was like by myself and I was like, no, it's happening. Like, I can't do this by myself. Um, but then and yeah, I just remember like kind of blacking out at that point. And like, you're just doing everything you can to like keep putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And I thought I was running like seven minute miles. Like I wasn't even sure anymore, like where I was like anything, but I remember coming into the park and I had like, you know, you see the 800 to go, you see the finish line and you're just like overwhelmed. Cause I, like at that point, I didn't know what time I was running. I didn't know what pace I was running. I didn't know what place I was. I just saw the finish line and I was like, thank God, <laughs> like I freaking made it. Like I just get me across that line. And then I crossed and like Lee was there and he was just like, oh my God, like you were seventh, you ran sub 230. And I like, at that point, I just, I didn't even know what any of that meant. I was just like, yeah. I wanted to sit, but um, it was such an incredible experience. I can't wait to be back at New York. Like so many great memories. Um, it was, I wouldn't change it for the world. That was like the best place for me to debut for sure. So. I, I think I, you've run Milrose, right? Yep. The five at Milrose, correct? Yes, I did. Ooh, that was a tough race. <laughs> Tell us about that race. Tell me what, what, what you thought, what was it like racing in Milrose? I mean, cause you know, being on the road and you've got 500,000 people screaming and stuff, and then you, you're in a place with 5,000 people and they make almost as much noise. Yeah. So can you even, can you even hear yourself think at Milrose? No. 
Milrose was so loud and um it was definitely Milrose was a bucket list race for me. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to take off like New Balance and Milrose as far as like the indoor circuit went and so I was lucky enough to get into Milrose. I think that was like 2016. Um and yeah, I just remember thinking like it is so loud in here. Like it was just crazy the energy and like the environment and then that field that year was like ridiculous. It was like I think was it Betsy Sena or I think Betsy was in it, Molly, Emily Enfeld, yeah. um, Abby D. Like the field was like nuts. Um, and I remember getting like four or five laps in, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> like I feel horrible. Like I just like the pace was so hot, and I just felt like I was all out. And it was a pace that like I had run before, but for whatever reason, like I don't know, it was just a really tough day. And so I remember. I was starting to get lapped like they were finishing and I had like one more lap to go and I didn't know like if I should get it on the rail or if I should move out and so I moved out and like cut Molly Huddle off and it was like this whole thing um and ran like 1535 and it was like the hardest 1535 I've ever run but it was so cool being there and just getting yeah. that experience um because yeah Milrose and like you just have all these great athletes you know like I think like Nick Willis and Centro battled in the mile that year and like you know I think like Will Lear was it like it was just like you're with the great athletes that you see on TV and like yeah, you see represent our country and like they're all at Milrose and it was just so it was just really cool to be there um even though the race didn't go really well and then we went to the bar afterwards which I'm blanking on the name but I think they closed um oh yeah I know which one you're talking about you talking about uh, uh, Coogan's Yes, right Coogan, we went to yeah. Coogan's after and like everyone was there, you know, and yeah. like that was super cool too. So like the whole experience and weekend of just being back in New York after the marathon was just really cool. I love New York. If I could do all my races in New York City, yeah. I, would. <laughs> I love it yeah. so much. <laughs> what was the biggest lesson you learned from Lee when he coached you over those six to seven years? Yeah, um, I, like I said earlier, like Lee gave me the gift of one, remembering why I run, yeah. uh, remembering why I started and why I love it. And just the simplicity of running. Like he just made it like, I think that's the cool thing with a lot of like the old school guys like him and Jonesy, like they just have this simple approach to running. Like, it's just yeah. simple. Like you run hard on this day, you do miles, like you do fart licks, you know, like I didn't do anything with GPS or heart rate. Like it, he just kept it so simple, which is what I've always loved about it. And I think why yeah. I love cross country so much, it's just like the purity of what we do. Um, and then Lee also was really instrumental in reminding me how to believe in myself and reminding me that it doesn't matter who's on that start line. It doesn't matter who's on the start list. Like you're as good as anyone you're standing next to. And yes, you might be racing some of your idols and you're racing women you've looked up to your whole life, but like, they're not better than you. Like you can race them. Like don't put people on a pedestal above you. Like it can be anyone's day. And that's again, another like thing that's so beautiful about our sport. Like it doesn't matter what the paper says, like, you know, we all have to go out there and race. And so he was really great at those two things. Um, and those are two things that I still try and like carry with me today <laughs> just remembering those when things kind of get hard or you're frustrated or you have bad races or whatever the case is it's just like why do I do it and just because today didn't go well doesn't mean you know that I'm not capable of doing x y and z you know so what was your experience with the 2016 Olympic trials um that was crazy. I'd never made a track trials or, I mean, I didn't go to the marathon trials that year either. So like I'd never been to an Olympic trials. Sure. Um, and so the biggest thing for me was just like, I was overwhelmed by it all. Like I kind of let that atmosphere and like the energy and like who you're with, like kind of get to me. And it's such an incredible venue Hayward, obviously. And it's such an incredible atmosphere and it's electric and, you know, but like, it was really easy to let the pressure get to you. And so, um, I mean, all things considering, like, I'm pretty like, now I can look back on that race and I'm proud of the fifth place that I got there in the 10 K yeah. field. Um, and just like how overwhelmed and like almost overstimulated I was. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously it was a bummer to miss that team. Um, but I learned a lot. Like, I feel like for me, I, I was so grateful for the 2016 trials experience on the track. I think it 
prepared me so well for 2020 with the marathon. Like I know track and marathon are different, but, um, I, I felt so much more prepared and so much more relaxed and calm going into 2020 versus 2016. So, um, I didn't make the team in 2016, but like I gained so much just being on that start line and like just going through the process that all of that entails and like the race itself. So, um, yeah, I look back on that and I'm like, wow, like that 2016 prepared me for 2020. So talk to me about uh, 2020. <laughs> what part? <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's talk about the marathon trials. Yeah. Um, Atlanta was, was awesome. Um, it was one of those, it, it's one of those experiences that is so hard because it was heartbreaking in a way I've never been heartbroken before, but yeah. it was so like bittersweet at the same time. Like one, I don't, were you in Atlanta? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like I've done New York, Chicago and London, and I've never seen anything like Atlanta. Like yeah. talk about deafening. It was so loud on those inner loops. I couldn't hear myself like breathe. I couldn't hear myself think like the energy that people brought to Atlanta, like made that race what it was and like really like emboldened me to, to race the way that I raced. Ultimately, I took some risks. <laughs> I ran uh, in the front for like half the race. Uh, I pushed the pace. Um, and, you know, I, I probably ultimately like missed out on, on, on the team because I expended so much probably too early. However, in saying that, one, the three best women made the team on the day. So like you can't play that game with yourself. And two, I'm proud of the way that I ran because I lost a lot of confidence in 2018 when I dropped out of Chicago. Um, I left Lee. Um, I, there were some, you know, I had osteoarthritis penis, um, for like after London. Um, and it took me forever to come back off of that and get back into the marathon. So like my, my confidence in the marathon had been shaken. Um, I got a stress fracture going into 2019 Chicago. So I ran well there on the day, but like, I couldn't run the race that I ultimately wanted to run. So mm. Atlanta for me was just like, I was just like, F it. Like I prepared well, I'm healthy. No one out trained me. Like I'm here. I want to make this team. This is my course. It's hilly. It plays to who I am as a runner. It plays to my strengths. Like I'm going to go out here and I'm going to make it as hard as I can. And I'm going to push as long as I can. And I'm going to race with confidence. And I'm going to race with the belief that like, if people are going to out you know, people are going to beat me and make that team instead of me. Like they're going to freaking have to, like, they have to work for it. So it was the first race since London of 2017, where like I allowed myself, I had the confidence in myself to run the way that I love to run. And it had been so long since I could do that in the marathon that yes, I was fifth. Yes. I missed the team, but I walked away from Atlanta being like, I'm freaking back, man. <laughs> like I am back in the game. Like I'm ready to go. Like I got my head back on Joe and I like for how we prepared. Uh, I felt like we crushed it. Um, and I was just like, I'm ready for the next four years. Like it's going to be exciting. So it, Atlanta gave me a lot of confidence back. Um, so I, yeah, it was a great day, uh, bittersweet for sure, but it definitely like it, ha I believed in myself again after that race. So I thought it was an honest course. I yeah. thought it was the most well-run Olympic trials I've seen since 1976. Um, it, uh, I think Ken, Rich Kana and his crew, the attention to detail, mm -hmm. uh, the difference between that and 2016 was night and day. Um, I thought everybody in each, in each field was treated with respect. Yep. I didn't feel that in 2016. Okay. Um, but I also thought that it was absolutely brutal, you know, and, and watching it from, I mean, I view a marathon as a, um, the, if the 10 is a chess match where you cut yourself real deep with a knife, the, <laughs> the, the marathon is a chess match where the knife is really sharp and you don't feel how deep you cut yourself yeah. until it's just, it's like this exquisite feeling. Even if you've done a great one, you're fried afterwards, you know? Oh, yeah. And, oh, and, always. Uh, always. The, uh, you mentioned that uh, the Joe trains you well. When did you hook up with, uh, when did you start working with Team Bossard? So I started working with Joe in the, like, December of 2018. 
Okay. So okay. I left me shortly after Chicago of 2018. He and I yeah. parted ways. Um, I kind of took a step back and was like, what the heck am I going to do? Like I have a year until the Olympic trials marathon. Like, what am yeah. I doing? I'm leaving my coach of seven years. Like, am I crazy? Um, but I knew Joe and Emma from college and Emma is one of my really good friends. And I'd always stayed in touch with her and Joe. And so Joe was great. He reached out to me and was like, listen, like, I know you're in between things. I know you're looking for another group or coach. And he was like, I also know that I like, mostly work with track runners right now. Um, I haven't coached a marathoner, but he was like, I would love to like take that challenge. And I would love to work with you if you felt like I was the right fit for you. Um, and so, uh, yeah, after like a month or so of kind of just trying to like get myself healthy from Chicago, I was just like, you know what, like this feels right. And like, I, um, I had a great group with Lee, like he coached a bunch of other athletes on our high performance, yeah. track to, um, BTC track club. And, um, but like, I, I never really like had a ton of women to work out with, you know, I, I didn't have a ton of women that, you know, could like really push and challenge me, not only in the marathon, but like in the other distances, which I think are so important, uh, in doing the marathon for myself. And so I was just like, and that was kind of one of Joe's cells. He was like, listen, like, you want to be the best in the world, freaking train with the best in the world. Like, why wouldn't yeah. you do it? And so I was yeah. like, all right, like he's got something here. So, um, yeah. So we joined forces in November of 20 or no, December of 2018. Um, and we're still together. <laughs> we're still doing it. Team boss is growing. It's so much fun. Uh, I have a blast training with these ladies. They definitely make me better day in and day out. I get my butt kicked on the regular. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, no matter if you crush a workout or someone else crushes a workout, like you walk away from the session and you're like, I just worked out with like a world champion, Commonwealth games champion, a 404, 1500 meter runner. Like it's yeah. just when you look around like three Olympians. So you're like, if I can train with these women, I can race other women that are at this caliber, you know? So sure. like, it's right. been really great. Um, and it's pushed me in so many different ways that like, I wasn't really accustomed to before and i think it's ultimately like making me uh, a better athlete so especially able, on the track especially yeah. on the track <laughs> you, you're able to compete over uh cross country distances indoor track distances outdoor track distances and the marathon when for americans for such a long time people went into the marathon because like the steeplechase at the time because they couldn't do the other events. That's not the way it is now. You know, Shorter would tell us that you needed to race a two mile every week <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be to, to prepare yourself. And he would do a, a, a three, three mile uh, time trial four days before a marathon at uh, under 430 a mile just to know his stuff, you know. And I've watched you race at all these distances being very successful. What is your favorite distance to race at? The marathon, okay, okay. <laughs> um, the marathon and cross country. Um, I'm actually trying to get a club team together, but, um, a lot of my teammates don't want to race cross country. <laughs> um, but I love cross country. I'm a strength runner. Like I'm a grinder. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I love cross country, like 10 K cross and the marathon are definitely like the races that, um, I love to compete at. Cause it's just, I feel like the, I feel most like myself in those races. So Will we see you at the Olympic track trials in the I sure hope so. Okay. Yeah, cool. I got to qualify. Um, so that's actually what I'm up here training for. Um, I'm going to do the 10K at Sound Running on May 14th. So like Awesome. Yeah, yeah cool. So she's going for the standard, baby. <laughs> All <laughs> so right. I hope right. I can get to that Olympic standard. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I want to be in Eugene. I want to race at Eugene at least one more time. Um, yeah. I think that women's 10K field is going to be... It's going to be hot. Um, yeah. It's going to be like a, like a kind of another version of the marathon. Um, so I want to be in that race. I want to throw myself in the ring. Um, and again, I believe the track stuff is going to make me better at the marathon. So until those kind of come back, uh, it seems like a no brainer for me to jump back on the track and give the 10 K another shot. So um, I'm excited. Yeah. Things are going well. So we'll see. Okay. Now this is the one you don't know about. I'm going to give you the names of five women athletes. Okay. You're allowed three to five words to describe them. Okay. Oh, you will, you will know all of them, okay? <laughs> and I started doing this in in um, in March. In Mike and my son Adam said, 
you got to do this every time. So I get these little notes from Mike. Larry, come on. Got to ask Laura <laughs> the big five. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Emma Coburn. How many words do I get? You get five. Five. Okay, God, Emma Coburn. Um, funny, humble, tough, confident, um, fast. <laughs> Those are like the five that this is hard. <laughs> Good. And, and, um, and you can use one to five. So it's, it's oh, whatever okay, you okay. do. Um, Asia Prop Lear. <laughs> um, one of my favorite people. I know that's like three words. Um, she is kind. She is funny and she, uh, is confident and also really fast. Like it's so hard. It's so hard to think of words. This is a hard game. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dominique Scott. Um, she's a fellow grinder. Um, she, uh, is super strong. Um, long run queen, um, future marathoner for sure. Molly huddle. Um, my hero, um, super nice, again, humble. So just practices humility. Um, she's tough and she's also a grinder. Um, she just, she's not afraid to push it. <laughs> Jenny Simpson. Um, super fast, um, confident. Um, she, I'm always in awe at how uh how she speaks and how she carries herself um and she'll make you bleed to beat her <laughs> uh dina castor <laughs> again another one of my heroes um yeah. tough confident um super strong graceful uh also extremely humble okay what's the biggest lesson you've learned from joe I learned so many things from Joe. Um, the biggest lesson from Joe, I think, in um, is his belief in me. And not only in, like, when it comes to, like, the marathon or, like, the events that I'm, like, much more comfortable in. Joe has really pushed me on the track. And he's really pushed me in believing in myself and seeing myself as being great, not only at the marathon, but also in the 5K, in the 10K. Like, he sees me as this like well-rounded runner, which like, I know I am, but again, I've kind of struggled the last couple of years and seen myself as anything but a marathoner. So I've, he's really challenged me, um, in these other distances. And again, and just that self-belief that like, he's like, you're lower freaking wheat. Like you ran 1504 in the 5k, like you can do this. Stop limiting yourself. Stop telling yourself you can only do one thing now. He's like, you can do all the things, but you got to believe you can do all the things. Um, so he's been great in just pushing me, uh, to keep believing in myself, despite kind of having the bumps, um, the last couple of years with injury. And again, yeah, just kind of some self-doubt that I've had. He's been really great. And just reminding me that uh, it's all still there and I can do anything I can, I put my mind to um, and just like remembering that. So. What do you binge when you watch Netflix? Um, I used to binge the office, but they took it off. So now I've been oh. uh, Schitt's Creek, new girl. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in season three. Oh my God. It is it's so, it's good. so depraved. It's so depraved. It's just, <laughs> you know, my girlfriend, and I have to, we sit and we watch like two or three episodes a night. Cause we, cause we can watch the whole thing, oh. you know? Oh it's, yeah. It's, like it's a mess. I'm telling you after you finish it, yeah. go back and rewatch it because once you've seen it and you go back and watch the early seasons, it's like even more funny because you oh, just cool. like know and understand the characters and like you pick up on things you miss. Like I've done that like a hundred times, but I love that show. I love new girl. Um, yeah, those are kind of like the two that come to mind right now. Oh, Peaky Blinders. It's another one. I watched one, one episode of that. It's good. Is, it's good. Um, do you have a favorite book right now that you're reading? Um, I, uh, am rereading, uh, Dina Castor's book because I love it so much, okay, um, but cool. I'm actually also reading Alexi Pappas's book, Brady. Um, that's that's on my list too. Active. Yeah. So um, those are the two. Yeah. If you were not a marathoner and you were a field athlete, what field event do you admire the most? Oh man, I admire all of them. Uh, um, I would love to be able to pole vault. I think cool. that is just so impressive to me. Yeah. I also think shot put is super impressive. Um, so those would be the two that I think I would like attempt. 
Um, I also attempted long jump in middle school, but like they wouldn't let me do it. So I guess I'd also maybe do that too. <laughs> what is your favorite track that you've ever raced on? Oh man, oh, man. That one's tricky because I have a few, but my favorite one is Stanford. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love Peyton Stanford. Jordan Rocks. Yeah. Yes, I love yeah. Peyton. Like, I just, that track is magic for me. <laughs> favorite marathon course? Oh, it's so hard. Uh, New York. Okay. I love New okay. York so okay. much. Like I said, cool. it was, I just love racing there. I feel like I always find my mojo when I'm in New York. So, mm -hmm. uh, favorite city to visit? It's really hard to do. Um, New York. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. That I okay. Keep saying that. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Okay. So you've survived now 39 minutes. Um, you've done a great job. Oh, and thank you. Uh, and thank you. We'll we'll you're, we'll send you the links and everything on this. Great. Cool. Do you, do you have a quote um, that inspires you? I mean, I don't have one off the top of my head because like I'm not great at like memorizing and holding on to that. But I do. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't. I can't think right. of anything. Don't right worry now. about it. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> final, final question. Um, let's see now. Have you? I, I just talked to Abdi Abdi Riramam, and he's forty three years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Hey, man, when are you going to retire?" And he looked at me, and he goes, "What do you mean? I'm still having fun. <laughs> um, are you having fun running? So much fun." Okay. I'm having a blast. So okay. that's the beauty is it's just like, I feel like, yeah, there's no reason to stop because it's just too cool. much fun right now. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going until that stops, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't. Maybe I'll just go forever. <laughs> Barth, we thank you so much. Thank I look you. forward to this. Good luck, May 14th. Jesse puts on great races with the yes. sound running stuff. I love the kind of bespoke events. I think that's one of the amazing things we're learning during the pandemic and i hope people continue them um stay safe uh i am going to be inter I, i've interviewed dominique talked to will i've got a few others on my list and sometime i want to get joe to talk with us too because i'm i'm fascinated i've watched him you know from afar I, and i like to observe people before i talk to them you know <laughs> yeah. and so I, I i he's on the list and uh and emma put up with me traveling around Europe and always asking her questions. So she was very patient, but you have a great day. Thank you so much. Um, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. We've just featured Laura Thweet. She is a Saucony sponsored runner. She races for Team Bossart and she was a lot of fun to chat with on Social in the Distance. Laura, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Take care. Hopefully nice. see you soon. Hope to see you soon. Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, Run, Blog, Run. It's your favorite program, Socialing the Distance. And this week, we featured Laura Thweet. Laura is a Saucony-sponsored runner. Uh, she trains with Team Bossart, and she's up at Crested Butte, over 9,300 feet of elevation right now as she's training for 10,000 meters. She wants to make the Olympic trial standard. She'll be running in Jesse Williams' sound running bespoke beat on May 14th, uh, somewhere in Southern California, and definitely at sea level. The word that I would use to describe Laura Thweet is effervescent. Mike Deering actually came up with that. Um, we just spent 50, uh, 40 minutes talking. It was a blast. Um, she went to the University of, uh, I went to Colorado, was coached by uh, uh, Mark Wetmore and Heather Burroughs. Uh, Laura Threat was coached by Lee Troop after Mark Wetmore and Heather Burroughs. She was with Lee through 2018, and then uh, she decided to make a change. She had had a, a pretty tough experience at the Chicago Marathon, and she moved over to uh, train with Joe Bossart, the uh, uh, hus husband and coach of uh, Emma Coburn. Um, Emma and um, Laura had been close, to, you know, uh, through their time in Colorado and kept a, a good connection. And Joe uh, told her that, hey, look, I haven't been working with uh, marathoners, but I, if you're interested in working with me, I'd be very interested in working with you. And they seem to have done real well. Um, while her Olympic trials experience 
in 2020 and the marathon wasn't exactly what she wanted. There were no excuses. She challenged and she learned a lot there. In 2016, she had been fifth place in the 10,000 meters, her first trials. And in 2021, the pandemic um, delayed trials. She's hoping to compete in the 10,000 meters. She She's hoping to qualify there on May 14th. Uh, what did I think of Laura? I think that she's got a tremendous amount of talent. I think that we're looking for a big race from her in the 222, 223 region in the next one. Um, uh, she's got the wheels. Um, I think the biggest thing for a lot of, like for a lot of elite athletes is confidence. Um, uh, she's run 1504. She's got the leg speed. She's got great 10,000 meter endurance and she's run well at the half marathon. And I think her secret sauce is her cross country, uh, experience. She's a cross country U S club champion. Um, and I think that bodes well for her in the marathon, but also in the 10,000. Her favorite distance is the marathon. Um, she likes to compete there, and she's done well having debuted there at 228 back in uh, uh, New York in 2015, I believe. Um, where will she go from here? Uh, well, she loves running, and she's having a great experience with Dominique Scott, uh, Efford, uh, Asia Pratt Lear, Emma Coburn. Um, there's a whole coterie of very fine runners who are training with, uh, Joe Bossard. And, uh, I think that's kind of exciting to see. Uh, would love to interview Joe down the road. We've talked to Dominique before. We've talked to Will Lear, who's up there encouraging his wife. And, um, Laura Thweet has been a blast. So, uh, I encourage you all to watch this, uh, interview. Um, make sure you, you encourage her next time you see her on the roads or on the track. Um, Laura, thank you again for your time and your honesty today. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run uh, signing off for Socialing the Distance. Thank you to Mike Deering for managing this lovely programming today and trying to keep me focused, which is no mean feat. Um, if you like Run Blog Run, like us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It really means a lot. You know, uh, retweet us. Um, and also, if you really love us, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got over 2,500 audios and videos. And in the last year alone, we've hit close to 400 audios and videos. 369 uh, Zoom videos done by our dear friend, Mike Deering, who somehow has to deal with me almost on a daily basis. Poor human being. Anyway. Stay safe, listen to Dr. Fauci, get a vaccination. I got the one shot from Johnson. Get the one shot, get the two shot. There's not a three shot. It's real. Um, I don't feel the Bill Gates uh, chip in my head, but there is a chip there, but that's a whole different story, and we'll do a whole podcast on that. Anyway, stay safe. Talk to you soon.